Welcome back everybody to another exciting duck man cycle. <laughs> We're doing ball joints on the bus. Not something I wanted to do, but I want to request it, so we're doing it. If you guys already got your arms disassembled and you just want to know how to take out those ball joints without a press, skip to the 17 minutes and 51 second mark. Thanks for watching. Let me show you guys why I was having so much trouble starting this. It's not because I'm an idiot, not because the battery was dead. Check this out. Oh, of course, now it's going to work. Well, now it just did it again. But anyway, that. <laughs> As I was digging around with the key here, the whole ignition came out more than once. Now it's working again. Yeah, now it's fine. All right. It looks like the little clip on here is not catching the inside of the ignition. Somebody may have, well, clearly somebody replaced this at some point. This is not original. It's got an awful lot of plastic on it. And what they did in here is they probably screwed up where the, uh, the little pin catches. So anyway, something I'll bring up to the owner's attention and maybe they'll have me fix it. All right, now just by looking at it, my German superpowers aren't going to pull off this hubcap. Yeah, this one is not like the... Uh, a type 1 or type 3 style. This one's a little different. Alright. You know, I approached it with a flathead screwdriver, which normally I wouldn't use. I would use a hubcap puller. But as soon as I did it, <laughs> it came off with barely even touching it. It looks like it's a little compromised with rust on the inside there. Alright. Five locks. This is not your beetle stuff. Let's see if they're loose. Now I'm going to venture to say none of them are. It's not like the square back where everything was not right on it. There we go. All right. One more. Ah. Ooh, what was that? Break my tool? No, it reversed on me. Dad's tools are no good. Feels like the ratchet's got a broken tooth in it. I have to bring that to Dad's attention. Hey, Dad! Whoa, I almost fell down like an asshole. <laughs> hey, Dad! Where do I go to return a S and K, and does it have a lifetime warranty? Anybody watching this, tell me where I can get that warranty, Dad. This thing is probably older than I am. <laughs> we got the back wheels already up on shocks. Sorry. My chips are rust. Oh. Can't use my left arm to do this. I have no strength in my shoulder still. Hurt that back in, I think as far back as January. It's still not 100% right. Ugh. Gonna have to rehab it myself. Luggies <laughs> off time. Alright, here comes the luggies. Calipers gotta come off. And those are usually, usually, the same size bolt as the lug nuts. This might get it. If not, I'll use the red. Sorry about the music in the background. <laughs> Uh, 
Yes, they were the same size, but no, they weren't loose enough that that tool can do it. Looks like I'm gonna need an extension on here anyway. Let's see if we can get this caliber off. Oh my god. That's on there good. Really good. Alright. I'm gonna have to get under there and wrestle it. <sighs> I have to get that shock off of there too. Yeah, what? Since I'm right here. I wonder if this will even get the shock. I doubt it. It's probably also rusted on there. This is not as clean as the fastback. <laughs> this has a lot of rust. I said fastback, but I said meant square back. That thing was uh, actually quite a pleasure to work on because everything was so clean. Can't get any leverage in here either. <clears throat> there we go. Take that first shock bolt out. <laughs> I wonder if the nut broke off in the tower. Something weird happened. Oh, there's a, a nut on the back side of it. Okay, what well that tells me is somebody already screwed this up in advance. <laughs> All right, after much fighting with rusty nuts, we pulled out our shock absorber. It looks like it's still good. I don't believe it. <laughs> shock tower was bolted in with a nut on the back side, which I don't think that's factory, maybe I'm wrong? Because usually they're supposed to thread into the tower itself. No, yeah, maybe it doesn't do that on here. I don't do a whole lot of Type 2 stuff. So, I wouldn't be surprised if I just didn't know better. Okay. Let's see if we can get this caliper off of here. one thing I'd like to say about all this work. Okay. I might have to get under there and pull on that. And you know what? Before I do anything else, if somebody else is going to call me out, I better stick a jack stand underneath this thing. I didn't do that yet. Oops. <laughs> it's starting to get a little dark out here, so I don't know how much more of this I'm going to be doing. It does look like we got a full moon tonight, though, so maybe we got a little bit of light. Okay, uh... I'm going to pop off the bearing cover because we're going to pull the entire rotor off here. Oh, this is the side with the, um, I almost forgot, because you can't see it because it's all greased over. This is the side with the speedometer cable. Is there even a pin in it anymore? <laughs> it just had a wall, a wad of like bubble gum over it. I mean, literally, that was like bubble gum. I don't see the little clip on the end here anymore. I don't see what's holding it on then. Okay. Will it just go through? Ow! Looks like no. Try again. Yeah, there it goes. It was just bubble gummed in place. I mean, literally, like bubble gum. Alright, there's our speedo cable. We'll just push it in. Yeah, here's the speedometer cable. That went out of the way, and it just got grease all over me. All right, good. Let's get the cap out of the way. Now, this side is reverse threaded. So in order to loosen the pinch nut here, I'm going to have to loosen the bolt and then turn it to the right. Now, only the left-hand side is like that, and I believe it's the only reverse thread, the only reverse thread anywhere on a Volkswagen. And just a little piece of trivia for you. Porsche 924s and 944s use exactly the same pinch nut. As, as a bus does, but they use the right-hand side one on both sides. They don't bother with the reverse thread bullshit. That was strictly a Volkswagen thing. Porsche didn't bother with that. But they use the exact same part. Different part number, but exact same part. And the reason why I know that is because I had a pinch nut and I put it on the Porsche spindles, and when I looked at it more closely, they were exactly the same. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, that's it. So I gotta loosen this up. I don't remember what size that is. It might be like an eight millimeter hex key. And then we'll just turn it right out and hold whole disc will just pull right off. 
and then I can get to the backing plate that's on here and then we can start trying to remove the spindle. I've already put a little P-blaster on the um, ball joint nuts. Hopefully they come loose. I have my doubts. <laughs> I also went and sprayed a little bit on the tie rod nut. I hope that that's going to come free also. When I played with the, um, the cotter pin on it, it actually just flaked apart in my hands. It was so rusty that it, there was nothing left of it. So that's probably not going to be too big of an issue because I think even if it was still there, when I turn the nut, it'll just it'll disintegrate. It'll just disappear. All right, let's get this out of here. Light underneath here. I might have to start turning on the uh, night shot. Oh, that works a lot better. Look at that. Okay, I was right about this. It is a six millimeter. So I'm gonna loosen that up. And as I said, to get this nut off of here, it's reverse threaded. So we gotta go to the right to get this pinch nut off. Once this is off, there'll be a bearing washer behind it. There we go. Bearing washers right there along with the bearings. See that? Down here. And then the whole <laughs> disc should come off. No wheel pulling necessary. Is there any bearings left on here? Nope, just a seal? Is that a seal? Nope, no seal. Ah, the seal's in there. Okay. All right, this is our backing plate. Looks like we got... Oh, we got... It looks like it might be 11 or 12 millimeter bolts, and then this backing plate should come off of here. I didn't bring those tools out, so we'll be right back. All right, these are 12 millimeter bolts that are in here. I thought they were 11s. I knew they definitely weren't 13s. 12 turns out to be what they are. Oh, come on. I'm getting tired. <laughs> Been out here all day. See, it's early. Not as early as I wanted to be, otherwise I wouldn't be out here this late. But, that's life for you, right? Welcome to the city. The big city of living. Alright, one backing plate off. There's our spindle. Now I can see some of the stuff that we have on here, such as our sway bar, which is bolted and strapped. We've got a bolt right here and a strap over there, which you guys can't see, but I think I'm going to call it quits for the camera. And I'm just going to keep on bolting some stuff. And, you know, I guess the, the next major thing is going to be the spindle bolts and the tie rod bolt. And once that's out, then it's a matter of pulling the arms out, but the arms are just a couple of grub screws and they pull right through. So I guess if you guys missed that, nobody's going to die. But you will see it when I put it back together. So we'll see you guys tomorrow. The following day. All right, well, I was way into the morning hours. Wee morning hours, I should say. <laughs> Getting this thing taken apart. There was just so much rust on this, it was incredible. And then I got out here as the sun was coming up and just started hammering on this thing, and, and I didn't like doing it. I tried to be courteous to my neighbors and try not to make noise too early. Typically, I don't make noise before like 9 or 10 a.m. Today is an exception, and it's the weekend, so it kind of hurts me inside to have to do that to anybody. But, um, yeah, you have to beat these arms out of position. And these came out relatively easily, considering all the rest of the rust problems that we had here. And we had the, the old spindle, the old, we had the old ball joint of doom, where you go to loosen the thing, and the entire ball joint just starts rotating in place. So that turned out to be a disaster, and that happened on three of them. So, yeah. On the bottom there, you can put a small wrench, and then you can use the big wrench, and you can try to, um, separate them that way and sometimes it'll get it but these things are so rusty that there's no longer a square bottom on these things so it was it was really frustrating to get these things apart i was getting ready to get in here and just weld the ball joints in solid so that way i can unscrew the nuts but anyway after many hours of struggling cursing and fighting with this mother i finally got it apart so there's the arms they do have good rubber gogies on them so at this point we're ready to start pushing out the ball joints so we're going to run over to tech session that's where we're going to do it. But first, before I head over to tech session, I have to cut these things free because I don't possess the proper tooling to press these joints out. So there's a few cuts that have to be made into them to make them so that way they uh, are press a bobble with uh, generic tooling. Anyway, that's it. We'll get back to the workbench and start cutting these things up. When it comes to pressing out these ball joints, in order to do it the wrong tool, because the right tool would actually push in on these notches here and allow you to press the ball joint out from the backside. With the wrong tool, you just have a cylinder that slides over the uh, ball joint, but it can't come out because these rings are in place. So, case in point here, you can use this 
angle grinder, you can use an angle grinder and just go ahead and cut the thing right on out and at that point the ball joint should press out of place. However, however, in the best interest of me working on it, in my own best interest and trying to save some time because obviously I worked a little too quickly on this and made some scars, I figured there's got to be a better way. And I knew there was a better way. As soon as I looked through my toolbox I said, hey, why don't we just use a hole saw? So we just cut into it until that ring spins around. And once the ring is spinning, Heck, it's off, and it's a perfect cut. I didn't have to hammer it, I didn't have to chisel it, I didn't have to fight with it, I didn't have to do any BS. It's ready to go. So now at this point I can slide the cylinder right over this thing and press the ball joint right after the backside. The only thing you gotta do first is you gotta cut the little dicks off, otherwise it's a little hard to get the hole saw in there unless you have a, a deep walled hole saw, which I don't. So that got it going, really not too much to it. So if you guys ever need to press out a ball joint on a bus, and I, I don't know, I think the beetle ones are actually the same way, but that's the easy way to do it. Just cut the rings on off and push them out using traditional tools. Good. Well, off to the press they go, and we'll be back as soon as we have new balls. <laughs> That's right. We're neutering these things and cutting your dicks off. What would you call them? Comment down below. Sorry, Icebox. Daddy's so tired, he forgot your name, buddy. He still loves you. Oh, you're Frosty. Where's your brother? <laughs> he went under there. There he is. What good boys. Good boy. Looks like you guys did a pretty good number on your food already, huh? Unless you buried it. They do that sometimes, too. They throw it everywhere and just bury it. Uh, I'm going to leave you guys in there while I continue cutting out ball joints. I a whole lot of video recorded today on these bus ball joints here. I had it in Don's Press, and Don's Press just, I don't know, just wasn't adequate. Just in trying to get things set up, it was an issue. So after dealing with all the distractions and other bullshit at Tech Session, and you know, people that just over and over and over again that say the same things despite not understanding that I'm long past their suggestions, nor do they understand the new situation that I've just encountered, and they say something like, Hey, Duckman, there's a tool for that. Yeah, no shit. It fits into the tabs on opposite ends of the ball joints and allows you to press them out directly. And that's if they want to come out. But do you have one? No? Well, nobody else here does either. And after step two that you see coming up, you won't be needing this special tool anyway. And hey, you probably won't even need a press for ball joint removal either. So if you've been watching me for a while, you'll know that I always come up with an alternative. And here it is. So if you don't have a press or your press just isn't working on some stubborn stuck ball joints, or maybe you just don't have the tool that everybody else tells me that I need and that there's no other way, well, I'm here to prove them wrong. So I give to you the Duckman method to remove ball joints from a Volkswagen bus. Why don't we just use a hole saw? So we just cut into it, heck, it's off, and it's a perfect cut. All right, guys, well, there they are, all pressed out. This is what happens to the outer races once we split them the way we did. Now, you probably, after you've watched this, you could probably skip the first two steps. I don't see any reason you have to cut the dick off or any reason that you should have to cut the flange off if you're going to use a Duckman method. Those things you probably don't have to. Now, if you have a press and it's just not up to par, like Don's press, Using my method, you actually could have on the final step them press these things out. But once they're split, well, essentially they get smaller, and then they come out of their locations, and they just they pretty much just fall out, as you saw. But when it comes to putting in the new ones, well, no excuse. We are going to have to press these in, so I will have to go back to Don's press and shove them in. But in is usually easier than out. And there it is. It drops in halfway because only half of it is splined. So it goes in just like so. And then when you put these in, you have to orient them with the tabs. See this tab here and the tab here? Well, there's a slot there and a slot here. And what that does is it lines it up with how the ball joint is supposed to flex, because it will only go one direction. That's it. It will not go the other direction side to side. Of course, it will rotate, but that's it. So if you put it in goofy like this, your suspension won't articulate at all. So make sure they do go in correctly, but it's just like that. 
Give these a good look over also once you got them back in. You may have to clean up around the flanges. This one had a ding mark in it. That was not done by me. You can see by the amount of rust that's on there. So that was something that happened to it long before I got to it. So I probably hit a road obstacle or something and made a little mark there. Anyway, that's causing it to not go in there. So I'm going to have to gently hit that with the die grinder and just take that little peen off there. That's right, it's been peened. <laughs> so yeah, the ball joint doesn't want to pop in. But otherwise, that's all there is to it when it comes to the Duckman method. But yes, you will need the press to push back in, so I'll be running back to Don's house. We'll grease up these things, clean out the insides, and uh, we'll push them back in where they belong. And then these suckers are ready to go back on the bus, and you'll see a follow-up video. Thanks, you guys, for watching. Licky, likey, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to plug that dingle belly so you get updates every time I upload a video. Check out Duck Shit down there for all my different social media links. And, uh, well, also, you can check out my wish list. There's something up there if you'd like to see some of the projects that I have coming up in the future. It'll give you a couple spoilers to what's coming up. So, there it is. I guess that's it for now. Thanks, you guys. We'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs>